Hi traders, in this video we're going to be discussing S&P 500 history. More importantly, history around seasonal charts and one of those is May. So you know what they say, when it's the first day in May, it's probably time to run away. We'll see you after this intro. So firstly, I'd just like to remind everybody to like, comment down below, and of course, subscribe and hit that alert button if you enjoy our content. So here's the S&P 500 chart. And last night we saw some bearish sentiment come in. And actually, the market has already broken past the first level of what we would consider a level that should have been support. And it's already gone down and it's looking to close potentially under this level tonight with the daily closing down here. This can be considered potentially now a false breakout. So if we do see the market fall further, the false breakout effect may have just happened. And that's often very, very common when it comes to bull traps, which everybody has been talking about at this time. So if we are in a bull trap, false breakout would make a lot of sense. In terms of where next key support is going to be, the next key support will be around this 2720 zone where the market will probably come down to this area and potentially find support there, bounce off a bit. And if it gets through this zone, it's going to come down to the next key support zone, which will be around this 2635 area. This area will then act as support. And again, like a normal market, if it's going to come down to the next level, many people are mentioning around that 2500 as being the next support and then potentially all the way back down to previous lows, and maybe even test new lows such as 2000 and 1700 on the S&P 500. So what we're looking for from a technical perspective is we want to see a series of lower lows and lower highs. So price action we've been talking about on this channel is going to show us the way in terms of making sure that the market is doing the right things. We've talked about the false breakouts being these points here where we've got shooting stars that have been busted by bulls and these have trapped many traders, unfortunately. So what we want to see is we want to see the market come down and probably on something like at least a four hour chart, it will pull back up and then it will make a lower low. So we'll start with a high, then we'll end with a low, we'll have a higher low kind of concept and then a lower low break is usually from a technical analysis standpoint, this signifies a change of trend. And it's been a while since we've seen that. In fact, down here, it was a low, on the daily, a high, a higher low, and then this is when the trend changed. And of course, there was a lot of you know buying that happened since that point. And this is where a lot of people were trapped, and that's because of that shooting star coming off the break of the new high. So what we want to see, high, low, high, low, lower, low kind of action. We could also see potentially a double top where it goes back up and tests that level. All of these types of things could happen or a break below this key support of the 2720. And that's when a lot of larger traders will start to get in, expect the volatility index to increase, all of these sorts of things to happen. So the premise of this video is sell in May and go away in terms of the concept and the investment strategy for stocks based on a theory. And that theory is that the period between November to April has generally been a significantly stronger stock market growth on average. And then in May, people sell to take profits. And that has been the idea behind the sell in May phenomenon. So we have some stats from 1928 to now that actually show that this phenomenon is statistically likely and more likely actually over the last 12 years since the GFC. So here we have the historical returns since 1928 to 2019 in terms of yearly percentages. And there's always going to be more bullish ones than bearish ones. That's just common sense. The market's going up over time. But many people are talking about this period over here, 1928 boom into 1929 bust. And then the, the bust after that period as being similar to what this current market is doing and potentially will do in the future. So it's a very interesting chart. Thought I'd put it up here for everybody. And this comes from Yardini.com. So go check them out. It's an amazing little analysis here that they've done. So the next chart that we want to discuss is the S&P 500 index from 1928 to 2020 
from a monthly standpoint. And the three months have actually been negative over the longer term. We've got monthly negative in Feb, monthly negative in May, and monthly negative in September. And I can definitely attest to September generally being very weak in the S&P 500. We've traded it for a long time, and especially in the last decade, this period here has been often quite weak, followed by a period of strength coming into the end of the year, and then of course, more strength generally in the, in the start of the year. The other interesting fact is, look how April has been a standout month, and we'll start to see this as we pull more figures and we're gonna go through a few different figures where April seems to be a standout month. Remember, we've just seen April finish and it's been a very good month in terms of the stock market pick up from where it was in March. If that's followed by what history tells you, May could be a bit of a downer. The next chart, again, from 1928 to 2020, in terms of average percent up or down in a month. So during the down months, we have a few key levels. May, again, stand out bigger negatives than positives. Again, April, bigger positives than negatives. September, October, bigger negatives than positives. And you know you can see that February was never really an amazing month either. So those stats are very similar across the board here. But May in particular, September and October are all very poor performing months. And history can help us in this standpoint. We've got more to come. Now, here is the one that really shows what's been happening. This is a compressed chart from 2008 upwards to 2020. And it even includes just recently with the month of March and what happened there. More importantly, look at the month of May stats and the month of August, backing up very similar concepts to what we've seen over that 1928 to 2020 stats. May has been a serious underperformer, and that is really important because guess what month we're in right now? It's May. We are coming into one of the historical bull potential traps that we've ever seen with Fed stimulus and amazing, amazing returns for month on month. It's going back to almost rewriting the history books on how fast a market can come back percentage wise. So May has been historically a pretty poor month. It shows it in these figures. And let's now talk about the stimulus that's coming into the market. But May definitely is not looking very strong. So here we have an amazing chart, and this is a chart about how the current stimulus packages compare and the size of the stimulus packages in selected countries as a share of their previous year, 2019 GDP. So it breaks it down to three different policy styles in terms of stimulus. And the US, as we can see over here, has chosen to do it a very different way to many other countries. Let's talk about the different methods and then talk about the percentages. So the first method is the immediate impulse. So the immediate impulse, what that is, is basically it's the additional government spending such as medical resources, keeping people employed, subsidies, SMEs, public investments and foregone revenues, such as the cancellation of certain taxes and social security contributions. And these types of measures immediately lead to deterioration of the budget balance without any potential direct compensation later. So it's that immediate impulse. And this is what a lot of people are talking about in the US and why the US and what they're doing is a little bit scary because they've chosen to go down the route of using immediate impulse as their main tool. The second one is deferrals. So deferrals are pretty much where the government has decided to defer certain payments, including taxes and social security contributions, which in principle should be paid back later. So the idea is it improves liquidity and then of course companies and stuff have less obligations so they can continue doing business during times of hardships. And many countries have done this to a certain degree. Germany, Italy, France have all chosen to do that. And the US has but to a much lesser extent. 
The last one is other liquidity guarantees. And these are things like measures including export guarantees, liquidity assistance, credit lines through national development banks. And some of these measures are to improve the liquidity position of the private sector. But unlike deferrals, which are automatic and generally apply to target groups, credit lines require action from the impacted companies. So they may not weaken the budget now, but they might weaken the budget later. And the idea is that you may want to use these to, of course, again, help out the private sector, as we mentioned. This is what Germany, Italy, France, and the UK has chosen to do in a much greater part than the US. So let's talk about some percentages here of what these graphs are showing. So the US has done a 9.1% as per GDP in terms of the immediate impulse. Compare that to the second largest here, which is Germany at 6.9%. Then you've got 38.6% in other liquidity guarantees coming in from Germany on the top end. And when you compare that to 2.6% in the US and 2.6% in the US as well on deferrals. So it starts to paint a picture that the US has gone all in on immediate impulse. And remember, a lot of this money won't get paid back. So who brunts this cost? The taxpayer. And it may not be that effective. So they're obviously incredibly worried about what's going on. Potentially, they move to these other types of guarantees later on as, as a form of still further stabilizing. And that may be what they've got left. But I tell you what, it's a chart that you just go, wow, they've gone all in on one concept and one concept alone. But it does show you what the US has done in terms of their impulse and stimulus currently. So we hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And we'll see you in the next daily video that we'll be doing during this crisis. See you in the next one, everybody, and happy trading.